Welcome to this tutorial. Today I will give you a basic introduction to the Model 7300 GUI and show you how to perform a simple face noise measurement. I've already pre-installed the Java GUI and have started it up and I have also connected my Model 7070 directly over Ethernet to my computer. So it shows up in this connection dialog which I can also reach by going to device connect here. So we select this unit which will automatically connect to it. The first thing we can see is that it already detected a signal here. This is one of our signal generators that is connected up to the device. Then we can first click on this question mark button this will give us a connectivity schematic. In our case, this is a pretty simple setup. We just have the DUT and we connect it directly to the DUT port of our signal source analyzer. But if you use external references or do an additive phase noise measurement, this setup might be a little bit more complicated and the schematic can be quite helpful. So on the second line, we can choose the frequency offset of our measurement. So let's choose a measurement of 10 Hz, 250 MHz. On the third line we have three buttons. With the first button we can choose whether we want to use internal references or external references. With the second button we can choose the number of correlations and averages. So let's just change the number of correlations to 1. And with this third button, we can configure the internal supply of the device, for instance, to power an OCXO or some other kind of DUT. We don't need this, as we are using a signal generator as our DUT, which is already powered. Now, the next step is already to start the measurement. So let's just hit the measure button and wait for the measurement to arrive. So we have already gotten our first measurement here. So to add it to our list of traces, we can just click on this add button here. This will change the color and add it to this list. We can select it, we can change the color of it by clicking on this rectangle we can see the timestamp and the DOT frequency and if we hover over the name here we can see some additional information how many correlations were used, how many averages we can rename the trace and can disable it or enable it we can also edit the trace to show more for instance, um, there were some spore detected during the measurement. They were already removed from the trace, but we can choose to, to add them to the trace again, so we can look at them. And we can filter them out using a threshold. We can smoothen the curve. And we can shift the trace to compare the measurement, for instance, to another measurement at a different carrier frequency. Okay, so let's look at the values of our measurement. So we can either look at the plot directly here, or we can add some markers. This is the marker list up here. Uh, it's currently empty, so let's add some new markers by clicking on the new button here and then just moving around with the mouse and clicking to set a marker. Then add some markers here. And we can see a list of the values at the respective points. Now let's do another measurement to see the difference between multiple correlations. So the green curve was a measurement with one correlation. So you can see that 
by doing multiple correlation the curve smoothens out automatically and you can see the measurement noise floor here this gray curve here it will indicate where the measurement noise floor is so if we have the trace itself lying on the measurement noise floor then by further correlating we can improve the phase noise value of the measurement but in this case we have some distance between the measurement noise floor and our trace over all the range so by further correlating we cannot improve the measurement itself we can only smoothen it out so let's stop at this point and add the second trace Let's change the color so we can see it a little bit better. Now we can look at the plot settings. So we have a settings button up here. So we can show more information on this plot itself. We can show a legend down here. We can add a title. We can show a list of all the markers. This will show the current selected trace. So we have no trace selected, so we have no numbers here. If we select the trace, we get numbers on that trace. Let's also show a list of all the spurs. We don't have any spurs shown here, so they will also not be listed here. So let's just show the spurs and you can see we have a list of the spurs okay we can also show the chitter values so this is basically a list of the rms chitter the residual pm and fm values as well as the integral phase noise over a selected offset frequency range we can also choose to change the background and grid color of the graph itself and we can scale and rename the axis so that's basically what we can do with within this plot settings dialog here so let's close this again now let's look at these tabs down here so we have already work with the measurement tab itself it shows us the measurement then we have a time domain tab this shows us the time measurement of the currently detected DOT we have a data table that shows us the numerical values of our currently selected measurement and a statistics tab that again shows, shows us those statistical data or selected range but it additionally shows us the Allen deviation and the RMS chip to plot versus um, the offset frequency. Then we have an observation tab. So this is mainly used for observation purposes. We see the frequency and the power level of the currently detected DUT tracked over time here, as well as the internal tuning voltages for both channels and in the measurement status tab we have some information out about the last measurement that was done and if there was some issues with the measurement they will be listed here along with some tips how to change your measurement setup so the issue can be resolved now let's go back to the measurement tab and maybe we want to export these traces so we can work with them in other programs or include them in a report. So we can do this by clicking on save trace up here. This will open a save dialog where we can choose between image or a MATLAB file, a Microsoft Excel worksheet, or just a text file with comma separated values, or also the internal binary format of the GUI.
So let's select the PNG. Let's save it on the desktop here. And let's look at it. So this basically just saved the plot as we see it in the GUI currently. We can also save a PDF report. So let's save it at the same place. This generates a PDF which contains, first of all, the measurement itself along with some information about the DOT. Then some statistical information like the Allen deviation, the RMS chapter plot, as well as the lists of the markers that we have selected, as well as the spurs that were detected. And we have also a data table of numerical values of the measurement. Okay, so we're finished. You see it's uh, very simple to just do a face noise measurement with this device and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you for your attention.